here's the thing that's on my mind right now. So I'm watching the news uh, this weekend, and it's a five alarm inflation fire. Every newscast, I'm jumping with it. Tonight, inflation, families, hundreds of dollars extra a week, a month. When will it end? 7%, 10%. And, and you, I'm like, oh my God, you know, this, is, this inflation has now gotten to a point where it's really beginning to affect people's bottom line. And they start going into the why of it, right? And the why of it is uh, supply chain and pandemic and uh, all, all these different things and nobody can keep things on the shelves and, and, and demand. And I'm thinking to myself, I think we're missing one small part of this. And that is these companies are making record profits. Like w when they keep talking about controlling inflation, they keep talking about, we got to drop, we got to raise the interest rates and try and uh, retain this tiger. And it's the only thing you can do. And yet, there is one other thing that we haven't ever considered, and that is these companies don't necessarily have to jack up their prices. The amount the prices have been raised is yes. far more than the cost of putting those products on the there shelf. You so go. it's just Fucking it's just Henry. a choice. Boom. And it's so funny that it's like prices are going up. What do we do? It's this complex problem, and no one's like, wait, have people just made the prices more? Yes. It that's that's the part that always confuses me. It's like inflation is always something that just happens to companies <laughs> where it's like I, I don't the price I don't know what's going on versus people being in the boardroom being like we're gonna charge three dollars more. Yeah, and by the way, only happens when you raise people's wages. When you pump the money at the high end, at the asset end of like real estate and bonuses, everybody's fine. The minute you give somebody fucking a couple of bucks extra an hour. Everybody's like, milk is a thousand dollars a gallon. <laughs> uh, can I tell you who, who I blame? Who? Rogan. It's got to be. Uh. <laughs> 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 all right. So so here's what we did. We 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 got in on the. Are you all right, Henrik? Oh boy, Henrik is out. I'm just He's making out. a good face for the memes that are going to be made. Out I know of that they're moment. they're coming. So. Some somebody had a tweet storm. Is that the correct way to go? Go viral. We reached out immediately. Uh, her name is Lindsay Owens. She has a PhD. She's the executive director of the Groundwork Collaborative, was also an economic policy advisor for Senator Elizabeth Warren, Sociological Association Congressional Fellow, a teacher on domestic poverty inequality at Georgetown University, which is a fine, fine institution. Lindsay Owens, welcome. Uh, to the problem. Nice to see you. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here with you. Lindsay, your your tweets were music to my ears. I, I've been yelling about this idea that we have no control over inflation because we can't, companies still got to make the profit that they make. The only thing you can do is raise prices. Uh, Lindsay, what's your take on uh, inflation? What's going on? And And if that is the only solution? Yeah, I've been yelling about this for a while, too. You hear a lot about inflation falling from the sky or Jerome Powell, the chair of the Federal Reserve, sort of like waving a magic wand and deciding the price. Um, you know, but the truth is prices are set by firms, right? Um, companies decide the price that they want to charge for goods. And what we have been seeing that was starting to disturb us is reporting not just of an increase in profits, right? Incre increase in profits, fine. Uh, demand is up, you know, you sell more lemonades at the lemonade stand, you're going to drive more profit. Um, mm. But what we're seeing is an increase in profit margins. So there's this story about ah, how okay. they had to charge you more because the lemons cost more. That's well, right. Okay, fine. Like they pass on the cost of the lemons, the additional cost of the lemons. That doesn't, that should not drive up profit margins. Profit margins are driven up when they pass on the cost of a the lemon and then tack on like a little something extra for the effort. So in a time of crisis, and we are in a time of crisis, is there any ability to control that? We don't, we don't really have any ability to say to a company in a time of crisis, you stop jacking us on lemons. We're just going to keep riding this lemon analogy. 
Lindsay, all the way yeah, through the end of the podcast. I hope you don't mind that. Yeah. I mean, look, there are a number of reasons why we're seeing high inflation right now. First of all, we've got some demand. People are buying some products. Some of that is because people have money in their pockets. That's a great thing. And I don't think the solution to this problem is to make a bunch of people poorer to solve our you know, inflation problem. Some of what we're seeing is you know, a shift from more money being spent on services to more money being spent on goods, right? That's creating some real supply challenges, right? Like supply is not meeting demand. And there are a lot of different reasons for that we can talk about. And the pandemic, of course, is among them, but it's not the only one. Um, but some of what we're seeing is this just sort of rank profiteering. Um, now, there are some tools in our toolbox for dealing with profiteering when it reaches the level of being sort of collusion or price fixing. Um, or, or gouging. Yeah. In 38 states, there are laws on the book against price gouging in certain situations right. like right. emergencies, like when there's a flood or fire or an earthquake, things like that. Um, but other tools that we have in our toolbox, frankly, when we see sort of rank profiteering like this is like, we can drive on tax, right? We can raise the corporate tax rate. Um, we could implement an excess profits tax. Well, you're talking, I mean, there are you're a talking about of a legislative fix. A legislative fix, I, I, I don't have any confidence in, you know, Henrik and Kaysen might, but I don't because the government is so slow to act. They are so uh, analog uh, in a digital world. And I, I want to make clear, have you guys noticed, because I, I, I notice this when I go shopping, like, these are uh, Johnson & Johnson. This is like, uh, if you go to the drugstore, uh, Tyson, if you go buy chicken, like these are major companies uh, that have jacked the prices really high. And you're saying, chances are, it's not commensurate with the added costs of their supply chain issues. It's actually quite a bit larger than that. And would they admit to that? Like if, if you were to call them on that, what would they say? Well, we don't have to call them. They've already told us. Um, so my organization, we looked at hundreds of earnings call transcripts. So earnings calls are just the calls that CEOs and CFOs have with shareholders when they release their quarterly earnings report, uh, you know, as they do uh, on a regular basis and file those with the SEC. Uh, by the way, they have to tell the truth on earnings calls by law. So like, this isn't just, you know, embellishment or bragging. This is them telling us what's actually happening. And what we see time over time, I mean, we're not cherry picking this. I mean, the, you know, it's a target rich environment. The CEOs are um, really just bragging and crowing about the pricing that they've been able to pull off. All right, um, here we go. I'm going to, I'm going to reenact Lindsay. This is a uh, case on <laughs> you're going to be uh, a shareholder uh, oh, for, for Johnson and Johnson. Henrik, I don't know what your role is in this. I'll figure something out. I'm going to be the CEO. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, everybody. Uh, we are fucking killing it. There's uh, some, some supply chain issues. It has caused some problems. But we've decided to jack this shit like you can't believe. Honestly, I'm dipping my balls in gold mm -hmm. as, as I'm on this earnings call. You are bound by law to tell the truth. So you are literally <laughs> dipping your balls in gold. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. That's my point. Case on. I'm very invested into this conversation because there's a dollar store in my neighborhood that has decided they're going to a dollar twenty-five, and I'm furious. And are they going to call themselves? Change the name? Are they going to change the name? No, they kept the name Dollar Store, and they're like, "Sorry, I'm like, no, you don't get to do this for mm -hmm. uh, Q tips, but it's like Q U E tips. Mm. It's like you don't, you don't get, you don't get to not do the that. brand stuff, right? Yeah, no, we know this is bootleg. You don't get it's to a Q tip with a sharp end, right? <laughs> Lindsay, I think the, the, the point we ultimately come to here is we are under the illusion that we live in a free market capitalist system. And we in no way live in a free market capitalist system. But the thing that's so surprising to me is your knowledge of this is not what I hear on the news. I have not heard one person talking about the excessive profit margins on like network news, right? They all talk about this is out of control. We don't know how to stop it. The Fed's going to jump in. Not one has said, or, you know, one thing we could do is maybe not jack prices so high during this time. Yeah. Look, I think this is very undercovered. I'll tell you where you'll find it is you find it in business reporting. 
you know, Business Insider, Forbes, Yahoo Finance, um, CNBC, Squawk Box, like they cover earnings calls because that's important information to cover as they track the stock market. And frankly, Mm -hmm. you know, investors come to those sources for information on on those earnings calls. But, you know, they cover it as a kind of like a little bit of a just the facts, ma'am kind of approach. And they also cover it, frankly, as um, an exciting development, (laughs) which is inflation has been really good for business. Inflation is right. keeping they're the stock gleeful. market. Yeah, yeah. When, I, when I've tuned into those and they're talking about it, they don't ever say like, uh, and you know, profit margins are not commensurate to the inflationary pressures of the supply chain. They always are like, look at these calls. Oh, the profit calls. Ladies and gentlemen, the bulls are running. This is amazing. Like nobody ever stops to go, oh, we're getting fucked. By these folks. And let me just say, as someone who has had my finger on the pulse of everything that Yahoo Finance is reporting. (laughs) Sure. um, Go ahead. They've been gloating. Mm. They've been gloating. But it is very funny to me, Lindsay, that what you say is is true in that like, and John, what you're talking about in the news reporting is that there's sort of this like panic of like a mysterious thing is going on. We have no idea. What's the solve? How's it happening? Where's it coming from? And then we just have these calls where people are like, oh, it's because I raised the price uh, 30%. So if all of these things are public consumption, what's the disconnect between what these companies are doing with inflation and how the American public receives it? Because it should be it sounds pretty clear to me on this call that like that's what they're doing. So what's the disconnect between these like shareholder meetings? That's a great question. Like, why is that? Yeah. So I would give a couple of answers. The first is that um, Americans are pretty angry about inflation right now. I mean, the polling really does bear that out. Um, You know, the latest kind of Moody's analysis suggests that families on average are getting hit with about $276 a month in additional costs because of inflation. Like, that's not a media conspiracy. That's like families who see the, you know, receipt uh, piling up at the grocery store. Um, And frankly, most Americans also know that this is part of the story. You know, when we look at polling on if corporations are to blame for inflation, there's a chunk of people who are pretty aware of this, right? Um, You know, across the political spectrum, Republicans, independents, Democrats. I think, um, you know, I don't think it it gets covered as much um, by the sort of standard, like, political reporters, just because, like, you know, there's a vested interest, I think, in using inflation, weaponizing inflation to sort of like wedge Biden, right? Um, There are also folks who, you know, there's a sort of like honest intellectual debate about the extent to which fiscal policies in the United States contributed to this and folks are playing that out. And there's a Mm -hmm. lot of reporting about uh, the supply chain and what's going on there. Um, And the supply chain story, again, is actually you know, related to this exact story we're talking about here, which is why are these companies in a position um, to charge extra without fear of being undercut by competition? Well, um, you know, 50 years of reshaping our economy uh, through mergers and acquisitions, creating these giants, um, you know, four people pack meat uh, and, and get it to the grocery store. There are three major shipping cartels uh, you know, basically like one country handling all the semiconductors. Jesus. This sounds like the mafia. This doesn't. This isn't. <laughs> this isn't free market capital. It's like, hey, it's a shame if something would happen to your chicken prices. <laughs> you, so you, you, okay, you, you, you gotta watch yourself out there. I see you, Tyson. So the the meat packers are definitely a mafia. There's four people who run 85 percent of market share. Is that good? I'm not an e- I'm not an econ guy. Is that good? Is that no. good? No. Thumbs up or thumbs down on that? Thumbs down. (laughs) Okay. Two thumbs Ah. down. Um, One of them's Tyson. Another one is this company, a Brazilian company called JBS. Um, They just settled, you know, of course, no fault, a price fixing uh, settlement two weeks ago. But the two brothers who run the company are like recently out of jail for bribery. Um, You know, this is not like, this is a lot less like your Econ 101 textbook and a lot more like the Sopranos. It absolutely is. Wait, the, the chicken people are bribing people? Yeah. Okay, so the name is JBS, just bribing someone. That's the, it's <laughs> okay. in the title. Right. There it it should we be name. saying all this stuff? Henrik Blix is calling out Brazilian meat purveyors in a very controversial I'm gonna way. I'm going to wake up with chicken feet in my bed. <laughs> 
by the way, I've never slept more soundly than when I wake up surrounded by. Lindsay, what, like, <laughs> this should be screamed from the, the hilltops because as soon as we stimulate the economy on the demand side, like we did during the pandemic, inflation runs rampant. But when you stimulate it on the supply side, inequality explodes, but inflation is fine. It's just those on the high end get to hoard. So how do we leverage this syndicate to not have such profit margins? Why can't the government then jump in, like in the way that they invoke the War Powers Act, why can't they jump in then and start to alleviate some of these supply chain issues and start to alleviate some of these manufacturing uh, lags and force these companies into something because, and maybe this is paranoia, but it does strike me that as soon as workers start to demand higher wages, and as soon as the government stimulates on the demand side rather than the corporate side, suddenly the economy decides, oh, uh, we're going to go into crisis mode and hyperinflate everything. Like it does feel very suspicious. And and if I'm being paranoid, please, please tell me so. No, I mean, at least, you know, at a minimum on the political side, if not the larger economic narrative, I mean, of course, workers are going to get scapegoated for this. Like that's absolutely the play workers wages and frankly, unions, um, you're, you're going to see um, and have already seen folks blaming like unionized workers at the port of L.A. Um, for the supply shortage. And, you know, it it is real to worry about what economists call a wage price spiral, right? Wages going up and then um, companies increasing prices to cover the cost of wages and then prices going right. up and workers asking for more wages. Um the good news is we haven't seen that at all um, in this moment. Right. So we can be fairly confident we're not in a situation where there's a wage price spiral. I think we're in a profit price spiral, right? <laughs> where That's right. You know, where these CEOs are driving harder and harder on price and are saying that, you know, there's more room to drive on price and will continue to drive on price. Is so is the answer here not so much economic policy or monetary policy, but trust busting? Is it, are we back in the Teddy Roosevelt days? Is this about uh, the government stepping in to create an environment that doesn't become so monopolistic or cartelish or any of those things? And how is there a, a way that they can create more competition and less price collusion in this marketplace? I'm not going to sit here and tell you that like, we run this policy play and every all of our problems are solved. Like this mess took 50 years to create and like we're not getting out of it overnight and like we may not even get out of it before the next mess hits. Um, I think the first, absolutely right. I mean, as aggressive as possible on antitrust, I want to see like the Department of Justice going after collusion, going after price fixing, um, you know, taking this on criminally. Um, which it is, it's criminal. You know, President yeah. Biden has asked uh, the Federal Trade Commission and the Department of Justice and um, senators, you know, such as Senator Elizabeth Warren have asked the Department of Justice to look into this. And I think that they take those requests seriously. And so hopefully we'll see some action on that front. Um, but there's definitely work that the Federal Trade Commission can take on as well here. Not criminal ones, but, you know, other other fines and abilities to take on this issue. How much of an issue do they think it is? And and do you know if that's made a dent in their priorities? Yeah, I mean, Lena Khan, who chairs the Federal Trade Commission, um, has spoken out yeah. on this pretty forcefully about both the profiteering that she's seeing right now and also, frankly, the, the kind of long arc story that we talked about around the supply chain and how, you know, waves of mergers and acquisitions over the last few decades um, got us to a place where these giants were really able to capitalize on a crisis. Um, so I think she takes this quite seriously. Is there a reason why uh, inflation and competition aren't talked about together? Because it just seems like uh, inflation seems to be a consumer's problem. And yeah. now that like Frontier and Spirit are together, like where am I going to get my $68 flights from? I don't care who makes my bread. I don't care who makes my eggs. I don't care about none of that. So why isn't competition more of a priority here versus 
uh, letting we don't companies... live in a free market capitalist system, even though we pretend we do. Yeah. I was just trying to alley you there for John. Thank you. Yeah! For <laughs> he slammed it into the mic. Uh, Lindsay, <laughs> is there anything that's giving you hope that this part of the story will A, be told more forcefully, and B, that there will be some uh, policy prescriptions that can help deal with it before this thing spreads out of control and we end up with just giant rate hikes and all kinds of other things that don't really address that core part of the problem. Yeah, definitely rate hikes are not gonna fix our supply chain issues or our competition issues or these sort of more structural issues in the marketplace. I mean, I can answer you know, the question about why economists aren't interested in this and like why competition doesn't get um, you know, brought up in this space. And, and I think the short version is they don't really have a theory of power. Um, power, market power, and power matters for how markets are shaped. Um, and I think folks like historians who study power, political economists, heterodox economists, uh, sociologists who do, uh, you know, and folks who are in the antitrust space um, do think power matters and how economies work. And I think, you know, macroeconomists are going to have to take power into account going forward if they want to actually be a predictive science and be helpful in a moment like this, which frankly, they aren't really right now. Do you think they got caught off guard that that corporations that have like, you know, almost monopolistic control over pricing decided to not necessarily gouge, but jack it more than than is necessary? Yeah, I don't think that they like to think about this. Um, and I think the earnings call data, um, which keeps trickling out, um, is really helpful in sort of forcing this issue to the fore. Um, and there's, you know, a lot more <laughs> where, where this came from, and there's a lot more to put out. Lindsay Owens from uh, the executive director of the Groundwork Collaborative, thank you so much for, for joining us and enlightening us uh, today. We really appreciate it. And uh, we will call you back when the wage price spiral is so out of control uh, that we're all getting nosebleeds on uh, uh, on milk prices. Thanks for having me, John.